I talk about romance anime a lot, some good and some bad. But a name that gets thrown around all the time when talking about great romances is Horimiya. When the anime came out in 2021, it got a lot of praise, and people still talk about and recommend it to this day. However, people only really talk about the anime, which isn't the only way to experience this story. Of course, in addition to the anime, there is the manga, but this isn't the origin of the series. The series first came about because of a web manga, and as far as watchable pieces of media, there is the OVA which predates the anime, as well as the live action which came out alongside season 1 of the anime. All of these different pieces of media tell the same story through a different medium, so obviously one of them has to be the best way to experience the series. And I have taken it upon myself to digest every version of Oimiya to answer just that. We'll start from the obvious place, the beginning. The original way the series was supposed to be enjoyed was the web manga, Horisan to Miyamura-kun, which was published on the Author Heroes website. Hero created the series back in 2007, and it was updated all the way until 2011. Now, before we get into the contents of the pages, there's one thing that I need to get out of the way. The art in the web manga looks very different from other manga that you may be familiar with, and honestly, it kind of looks like it was done in MS Paint. Now, is it better than anything that I could do? Yes. Is it jarring to look at? Yes. So, prepare yourselves because here we go. Hey, Yoshikawa, you doing okay? All joking aside, this could kill your enjoyment. It's readable, but it takes a lot to get used to. But there are some positives I can say about the art. One, it is in full color, which other manga aren't, so props. Two, even with the backgrounds just being one solid color, there are a lot of context clues added in that help establish where you are, whether it be uniforms or other set dressing. At first, I wanted to say the opposite because I was kind of confused at first, but once I started paying more attention, I started to know where the characters were at. You might have this issue at first too, but the clues are there, they will help you. And finally, we have the biggest thing I like about the web manga art. A core theme of Horimiya is everyone having an outer personality and an inner personality. Hori and Miyamura are great examples of this both internally and externally. Miyamura seems like a very grim guy, but he is actually very sweet and a little awkward. To show this difference in a physical way, at school he wears glasses and has long hair to cover his face. But under all that, he has piercings and tattoos, which is a far cry from how he normally looks. Hori is the same way. At school, she seems like a typical popular girl who likes to gossip and hang out with her friends at karaoke. But she actually has to take care of her little brother because her family is always working, so she is very domestic. To show this difference physically, Hori wears makeup at school, but not at home. This is very apparent in the web manga. Hori's eyes are drawn completely different depending on if she is at home or school. This is not present in most of the other adaptations. Despite the art, the story is the exact same as the anime you might be familiar with. Hori and Miyamura are both in the same class, but don't interact until Miyamura brings Soda, Hori's little brother, home one day. After that, the two become closer to one another over the next year, and the bulk of the series is these two getting closer while interacting with the literal colorful cast of characters. Because the story is essentially the same throughout all the adaptations, I don't really recommend this one all that much. The art is a lot to get over, and the anime and manga are more readily available. In fact, you can't even find the entirety of the web manga in English online. A lot of it is translated, but there also is a huge chunk that just isn't. So only check out the web manga for the novelty of it if you are already a Horimiya fan. The next adaptation to come out was the OVA, with the first episode dropping in 2012 and the last two episodes dropping in 2021, right after season one of the anime ended. Cool to see that they remembered the OVA existed. The OVA is very short. It only has six episodes, so it doesn't adapt everything from the web manga. It gets a lot of the early things, like Hori being mad about Miyamura saying they don't make a good match, and the time when Hori gets sick. These are very important to the story as a whole, so obviously these would be included. 
But some things aren't included, like Hori not knowing Miyamura's given name. This is actually a really cute moment because Miyamura reveals that he actually knows hers, so I was a little sad to see it missing. They also cut out a lot of the supporting cast for the sake of time. This is something that the anime and live action do as well. One of the criticisms of Horimiya is that after the two get together, the story drags on. This is because after Hori and Miyamura start going out, the story becomes less of a romance and more an ensemble comedy, utilizing and focusing on the extended cast a lot more. In fact, more characters are even introduced after they get together. I understand where this criticism is coming from, especially since Hori and Miyamura don't have a lot of cute couple moments in this back half. But I actually really enjoy the ensemble scenes. I think the cast is really solid, with the exception of Salada and I love how the story starts to mix and match characters to see how they interact. But even still, the OVA only got a handful of episodes, so I understand why they started cutting things. The art style in the first couple episodes is very close to the web manga, with barely any backgrounds to speak of. But as the episodes continue to release, the art style changes, getting more polished as it goes along, but it doesn't look drastically different. Earlier, I mentioned that episode 1 released in 2012, and the final episodes came out in 2021. The other episodes also dropped sporadically throughout the years in between. Episode 2 dropped in 2014, episode 3 in 2015, and episode 4 in 2018. This can account for the increase in quality. And since the episodes all dropped pretty far apart from each other, they all have different EDs, except for the sixth one, which doesn't have one. So, how are the EDs? ED1. It's fine. ED2, it's also fine. ED3, sounds similar to ED1, it's fine. ED4, we're getting better, but it's still fine. ED5, here we go, this one's good. I honestly don't have a lot to say about the OVA. The series is cute because it's still Horimiya, but I wouldn't recommend it over the anime because the OVA skips over things that the anime covers. But the series is readily available on YouTube, so you can go ahead and check it out if you want. Next, we'll discuss the manga adaptation of the series, one of the more famous incarnations. The series was picked up by Square Enix for their G Fantasy magazine, and it was published from October 2011 to March of 2021, wrapping up right around the same time as season one of the anime. The manga is the most complete adaptation by far. Everything that is present in the original web manga is here, as well as a few original elements. First off, there is the second year's trip to Kyoto, which is, as far as I can tell, original to the manga. This trip is actually really funny. I love this joke about Miyamura being on his period. This part honestly sold me on the series. But the manga doesn't just add things, it also changes some things. Like our introduction to my favorite character in the series, Sengoku, the man! In the manga, Sengoku is mad at Hori because he thinks she forgot to turn in some reports. But in actuality, Raimi just dropped them after physically bumping into Miyamura. This is a big misunderstanding and makes Raimi look a little airheaded. But no one is necessarily in the wrong. However, in the original web manga, Raimi messes up on the reports and goes to Sengoku for help. And he intentionally blames Hori for the mistake and only apologizes for it after Miyamura calls him out after overhearing them talking about it. This makes Sengoku an asshole. Hashtag not my Sengoku. And it is a little jarring seeing Sengoku be set up as this total dick, only for him to become the goofy character he is later in the series. I welcome this change to the series wholeheartedly. Other than a couple story beats having slight changes, the manga is very faithful to the original source. But of course, the biggest change is the art style. The art of the manga is done by Daisuke Hagiwara, and it looks incredible. But there is one thing about the art that I have a problem with. Now, bear with me, this is a nitpick, but I have to get this off my chest. The manga is the only version of the story to not have color, and this was the first way that I experienced Horimiya. And now, despite seeing Hori on the cover of the volumes, Within the pages, Hori's hair always reads as blonde to me. This shouldn't be a problem, but there are several moments within the story where Hori has a ponytail. And as we all know, I love my brunettes with ponytails. But since my brain is convinced that Hori is a blonde, the serotonin just isn't hitting the same. 
So the manga is robbing me of a brunette with a ponytail, which is the one thing that you don't do. I think the Horimiya manga is fantastic. Do yourself a favor and read it if you haven't already. 16 volumes are available right now in English, with a 17th one on the way later this year, so it is definitely an easy manga to get into. And now we will move on to the main event. The main thing that everybody knows this series for. The anime which came out from January to April of 2021, initially coming out with 12 episodes. Right off the bat, I want to say that the anime has the best presentation yet. The art style is very faithful to the manga, and it also has some great scenes that show creativity with the characters standing staring at each other. This is how all anime adaptations should look, vibrant and interesting to look at. When it comes to adapting the story, the first season of the anime does a similar thing to the OVA where it skips some things that are in the web and normal manga. In fact, it even decides to make the bold choice of adapting the end of the entire story in the final episode, which causes it to skip 65 chapters. This gives the anime a pretty lightning fast pace. It ends up missing a lot of things that I enjoy in the story, like the sports festival and most of the scenes featuring Sengoku the man. But these parts of the story don't remain exclusive to the manga for long, because in summer of 2023, Horimiya Peace was released. This adapts most of the things that were skipped in season 1. I say most because not everything got animated, like Yuki having a thing for Miyamura in the beginning, Miyamura being sick, and the scene where Hori finds out her and Miyamura weigh the same. This is a very interesting way to do an anime adaptation. Peace is less a season 2 and more a supplement to season 1. But this does mean that Horimiya has two different watch orders. There is release order, and then there is chronological order. Release order is easy to understand, just watch the episodes as you see them on Crunchyroll. But chronological order is a little bit more involved. First, you watch episode 1 of Horimiya in its entirety. Then you go to episode 2, but only watch until the 9 minute and 37 second mark. Then you go to the Missing Pieces episode one. Then, then you go back up to until the ten minute and watch. Then you go ahead and start episode then three. Then you're going to go then from you go ahead and watch the twelve minute over or skip until then you can watch nine, episode four, five, four, five, and six. Normal. But after that, then you're you have to go to episode seven. Then you're going to go watch from twelve to seven. You watch the beginning and go until twelve fourteen. This headache is because piece groups things together that have a similar theme rather than adapt things in order, like putting together all of the chapters that revolve around the Kotatsu or all of Yanagi's chapters even though these parts aren't consecutive in the manga. I understand why these things got skipped in season 1, and I'm very happy that they got added in retroactively, but the different watch orders is a little much. Yes, you can enjoy the anime in release order, that's how I watched it, but I do prefer seeing it done in chronological order, like in the manga. So that's why I would put the manga over the anime. But... At least in the anime, I get to see all the glory of Hori with a ponytail. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. And of course, we have to answer the question, how are the OPs? Well, P1. It's good. Not one I would listen to all the time, but it's good. OP2. It's okay. How are the EDs? And I promise, these are... Better than the OVA ones. ED1. The intro is good, the rest is just okay. But the visuals are really cute, though. ED2. It's good. Easily the best song of the entire bunch. And finally, we have something that I didn't even know existed until I was doing research for this video. And that is the live action, which came out from January to April of 2021, right alongside season one of the anime. But the live action only has seven episodes. The live action is unique because, well, it's in live action. So we can't talk about art style at all. But we can talk about casting. Miyamura is cast well, but looks goofy as hell in this wig. Look at him! Maybe if you got rid of that old yee-yee-ass haircut you got, you'd get some bitches on your dick. Hori is also cast well, and they actually have the actress wear makeup when in the at-school segments, and no makeup, or at least different makeup, in the at-home scenes. Really nice touch. Toru looks like he just stepped off the page, and Sengoku the man's actor looks accurate and can act like you wouldn't believe. 
Really wish we got more of him. But as you can see, none of the characters have colored hair, which I'm not sure how I feel about this. On the one hand, the characters with colored wigs might look a little silly. Case in point, Miyamura. But a large charm of the series comes from the hair color of the characters. I know I played up how upset I was about not seeing Hori's hair color in the manga, but I actually think that the manga is missing something since it is in black and white. The anime looks so vibrant because of the cast and their quirky colored hair. Hell, you even get this in the web manga. So, yeah, I understand why the different hair colors aren't here, but it does take something away from the look of the characters. Speaking of the look of the characters, this girl does not look like Yuki. She's a good actress, but yeah, I don't see it. The live action follows the trend set by the rest of the adaptations, where it will skip a lot of things and just focus on Hori and Miyamura's relationship. But the live action rips through this story like nothing else. You want to take a guess at when Miyamura confesses in the live action? Reminder, the series only has seven episodes. Did you guess? Episode two. That's right. It takes Miyamura's dumbass two episodes to confess in the live action, but it takes him 20 chapters in the manga and four episodes in the anime. The anime cooks through the plot, but the live action burns through it like a rag covered in kerosene. Because the live action moves through the plot so quickly, the relationship between Hori and Miyamura doesn't really get fleshed out all that much in the beginning. The live action isn't a great adaptation of the story. It moves too quickly. But it is a good way to see moments from the series in live action. The scene where Miyamura hops over the fence looks really cool and cinematic here. In fact, this part looks cool in the anime and even the OVA, but it looks like this in the web manga. The scene where Hori decides to pretend to be scared to look cute in front of Miyamura is done accurate to the manga, but there is actually a live-action exclusive scene that is hilarious, where Hori is practicing being scared. It's just really funny, and Hori's actress does a good job here. Also, later in the same scene is the part where Hori and Miyamura have sex, which Hori bites him during, because Hori is a menace. Now, in the manga, it is heavily implied what is going down here, but it isn't very obvious, and the anime is even more vague with this part. But in the live action, ooh, it is so clear what is going on. I don't even know if I can show this on YouTube.com. Those are examples of scenes that the live action does pretty much one-to-one. -one. But there is a big part of the story that is almost completely changed. Earlier, I mentioned that one of my favorite parts in the story is the sports festival. The sports festival is something that gets overlooked in some adaptations, but I like it because of the use of characters and Hori in a ponytail. Some of my highlights, other than Hori's ponytail, are Miyamura cheering for Toru with Remy and Sakura, and Hori and Miyamura both trying to get Sengoku the man to go with them for the scavenger hunt. The live action instead goes for a ball sports tournament instead of a typical sports festival. One of the big moments is Hori and Raimi playing table tennis together. During this scene, Raimi asks Hori if she can have Miyamura in order to get her to screw up. This is borrowing from a different scene that takes place earlier in the original story. This part is fun, but I don't see why it had to be done like this instead of the way that it was done originally. And the other big moment from the ball sports festival is the basketball game that Miyamura, Toru, and... Ear. I'm gonna be real, it's episode 5, and I'm not too sure who this is. Anyway, it is those three versus a team led by Mizuuchi. Mizuuchi has a crush on Hori, and he is present in the manga and anime as well. He is defeated by Miyamura, showing him how much of a freak Hori is by yelling can it bitch at her, which she is very into. Hori is a menace. In the live action, Mizuuchi is bested by Miyamura beating him in basketball. While this part is original to the live action, and it replaces some stuff that I like from the source, I do like this basketball game. It's pretty corny and straightforward, but it is nice to see Miyamura get one over on the guy who wants to steal his girlfriend. While the live action changes a ton from the sports festival, it does keep the cheer dance, Yuki helping Sakura with choreography included, and the moment at the end where Miyamura gets to see Hori in a cheerleader outfit, which Hori's actress absolutely rocks ponytail and all. And lastly, how's the OP? It's okay. 
How's the ED? It's fine. The live action is really cute and has a lot of charm. The whole thing is available on YouTube with English fan subs, so I do recommend checking it out if you enjoy the anime or the manga. So, what is the best way to experience Hori Mia? Well, I would have to say that my preferred way is the manga. It is readily available, it covers the entire story in chronological order, and despite not having color, it has a great look to it. Now, even if I do prefer the manga, you can't go wrong with the anime. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and with that, sayonara.